keeping safety front of mind is all about communication. Welcome to the Farm Safety Roundup, a podcast series focused on important conversations to help keep farmers, their families, and their workers safe. Farm Safety Roundup is brought to you by the agricultural team at Workplace Safety and Prevention Services. With today's timely topic, I'm your host, Sean Haney. Let's get to it. All throughout the growing season, especially at harvest, we need to keep our eye and our minds not only on the crops that we're growing, but also on farm safety. I know you might be given a little bit of the eye roll. This is important stuff, and you absolutely know it. And here's the other thing. When we're thinking about farm safety, and as it applies to transport, there's obviously in-field safety that is absolutely critical, but there's also on-road safety as well that we need to be considering. So I'm really excited about this new series that we are launching at realagriculture.com and Real Ag Radio. It's called the Farm Safety Roundup, and our partner is Workplace Safety and Prevention Services, and I'm uh, really happy and glad to bring in our first guest in this new series that we're really excited about. It is Fred Young. He is Agricultural Health and Safety Consultant with Workplace Safety and Prevention Services. Hey, Fred, how's it going? Fantastic, and uh, thank you so much for the opportunity to talk about health and safety in ag. Yeah, absolutely. Very, very, very important topic. It encompasses a lot of different areas, and uh, we've made a lot of improvements in the industry when it comes to safety, but we obviously got more room to to grow as well. Now, uh, let's start with on road safety. Now, obviously, I don't think there's many farms in in Canada where you never have to get on some sort of a road to transport equipment from field to field. And a lot of times I see people complaining about, wow, these drivers don't know how to drive around equipment. And hey, th- there may be some truth in that. And there probably is in, in many examples. But we also can take accountability too, right? We play a role in making sure when we are transporting equipment, we're driving that combine, combine down that, maybe it's a highway or a rural road, we are doing things that make that, that safe as well. So that, do you have some tips or things you want to run through to try to help people out here? Well, I think the first thing is uh, when we look at the equipment, what's the condition of it and uh, how big is it? Um, do the uh, lights work on it? Do you have the right reflectors? Uh, is there any terrain issues? Uh, do you have any bridges nearby? Uh, is there guardrails? Because even if we take the uh, combine head off, that's still a big piece of equipment. You're yes. still crossing the center line. So that idea of, yes, I still have the right to be on the road. I still have to take some sensible precautions so that I don't create any conditions that make it hazardous for both me and the operator or me and the rope, the motorist. Are there, are there things that we should be making sure we, we do to, to warn people that are driving towards us behind us that, Hey, we're here because, you know, I, I remember, um, I personally drove up one time on a swather and there was no flashing lights or warning lights. It was like just at nightfall and it was it was a pretty close call. I actually know a family where yes. somebody died because they had driven into a piece of machinery on the road like this. So talk about that. Right. So uh, certainly when we're traveling on the road at any time, uh, most farmers today will have that beacon. They will have the four-way flashers on. Uh, some will even have uh, uh, magnet flashers so they can stick it on the back of the grain wagon. So it doesn't really, you know, whether I'm daytime or nighttime, I'm doing as much as I possibly can to make myself visible. Uh, that tends to be the key thing. I've even seen where farmers have put up an old uh, uh, forage wagon in the field with a big SMV sign on. They painted a, you know, a 12 foot SMV sign on, on the side of that old forage box to try to warn the public there's farm vehicles moving in the area. And certainly some of the municipalities have done that as well. They'll put up placards that this is a farm vehicle area or farming activity is is active here. Uh, Those things help. Um, To me, the key things is the condition of the equipment. Uh, What's the braking system like? What are the wheels like? Uh, Do you have the correct uh, hitching set up? What are the safety chains like? Um, Because that's really what enables that farmer to travel safely. 
along the highway. And uh, that has a lot of influence on the care, or, or I should say the, the, uh, the control of the safety related issues on the road. Yeah. And you stay alert for like, I, I know, like soft shoulders, <laughs> like that, that can be a real dangerous situation. You, I think you mentioned the bridges and things like overhead wires. Those are things really just, you're like, want to avoid, avoid running into that being the problem. Well, some of the farmers run into this kind of a challenge where cars are behind them. They expect them to move out of the way and the farmer has every right to be on the road. They're not legally required to move off the road. And you mentioned the soft shoulders. Springtime, fall, was it just regraded? Yeah. To suggest the far farmer's gonna know that it's safe to pull over, they can't know that uh, unless they've been on that shoulder before you know, that day, that kind of thing. So what we really try to encourage is if you can pick a non-busy time, like uh, not on a long weekend, if you can avoid it, uh, then use that where you can. And, and with, the, with the understanding is if you see farm vehicles on the road on a long weekend, there's one reason why they're doing that. They don't have a choice mm -hmm. because they don't go on the highway just for fun. They're That's on right. the highway because they need to be there. They need to be moving equipment or, or, or taking their crop off or whatever the purpose is for them being there. So they try to spend the least amount of time as possible on the road because they understand those risks. And I'll give you a perfect example. Just on Wednesday, I got a report of a of road fatality where a farmer was traveling down the road and something mechanically failed on his tractor and his tractor end up in the ditch and, and he lost his life. And this is what you have to appreciate. Farmers face that every time they go on the road. Even when you check things, there's always those things that can happen that you can't anticipate where that tractor stops and it's a major intersection. Well, now they have to get that equipment out of that intersection because it creates that vehicle scenario. So. It, it does become very problematic when, you know, they, they do put a lot of effort into that to try to prevent it. But those kind of things still do happen. Fred, when we think about infield, when it comes to equipment, I would like to get your thoughts on having like that morning safety tailgate meeting or having a safety plan, an emergency response plan. Um, how, how do those things fit? into you know helping yourself deal with challenges as they do come up well i think most farms today um whether they're in the field in the spring or whether they're in the field during harvest time if there's an emergency it could be a combine fire it could be a baler fire it could be somebody's got caught in the, uh, the nodder on the baler, and now we have to get the emergent re emergency response to the field where you are. Um, there is a project called the Emily Project where it's identifying every farm field with a number. And the best example I can give you is at home when we were calling for the ambulance, uh, the ambulance was going down the side road and my brother's looking out the window and he's on the phone, and he's going, turn around, you're going the wrong way. And that's when we didn't have those numbers. So it's so important that uh, if anybody across the country doesn't have that specific method to identify what farm they're in, that's something that I would approach the municipality and go, look, we need to set up a system that's going to work. The Emily project is a very effective way to do that. There's a couple other variables here that do contribute to safety not being at adequate levels and we have to manage it one is one your harvest is long hours your own fatigue and and the second one is your own stress level so talk about how those factor into farm safety in this context so certainly when we look at farmers that are in the process again of doing all the stuff they do in a day and Again, whether it's planting, whether it's fixing equipment, whether it's harvests, trucking, these are all the things they have to manage all in a day. And uh, 
16 hour days are normal. And a lot of people don't appreciate that. And certainly during those extremely busy times, the days are even longer than that. Some farmers have the ability to get their brother, their cousin, their nephew, their niece to help, but not every farmer does. And that idea of understanding how your own system works and go, no, what I need to do is when I'm, lo when I'm unloading that wagon, uh, I'm going to take a micro break. I'm going to sleep. And even if it is for a few minutes, it's getting that energy back. Um, and, and to me, that's the biggest thing, because the last thing you would want is to be on the road and, and fall asleep for yourself, for the other motorists that are on the road. Uh, from the business side of damaged equipment, um, understanding how your system works. And uh, yes, farmers can work many hours and not fall asleep. But when you push the envelope uh, too much, then uh, tragedy happens. So uh, getting out of the tractor, walking around, you can still check the tractor uh, or check the equipment uh, to give yourself a bit of that movement break. It's a bit of a micro break for for sitting for a long period of time as well. It makes you a little more alert. Uh, those are some things that can be, can be done. Just like eating appropriately, that helps keep your energy up. Um, and that, those are just some simple things to consider uh, as you, you know, right now, uh, certainly working on harvest and getting into the thick of it. Uh, those are things to be mindful of related to the fatigue part. Yep. Oh, and what about roll, uh, roll switches? So what I, I, I know a farm that does this where for certain periods of the day where it's like, you know, they're the combine operator. We're kind of getting to that afternoon lull, right, where you're, you're kind of feeling the fatigue. It's like, you know, I'm going to drive truck for a couple hours. You drive the combine and, and you can uh, just a different roll and that switch sort of is a bit of a, a wake up as well. Well, absolutely. And, and really, it's just managing the workload, right? So whether you're a cash crop, operation or whether you're a dairy operation, whatever commodity you're in, um, that ability to, okay, who's going to do what today? And if I need help to switch up, then that's understood. Um, and the other part to that is, is just uh, when you think about where people are, how long they're going to be there, you know, when your kind of internal radar goes off, where is, you know, where's dad, where's mom, because they should be, I should be able to see them in the field, I should see the tractor moving and it's not, right, or the combine. And and those are just things to consider and, and most farmers already do that, but it's just a, a constructive uh, reminder on that. And, and here's the thing we have to appreciate. When you have two hours of sleep, it's equal to being impaired. So the idea that the farmer with two hours of sleep is now getting out of the combine because there's a problem with the belt or there's a problem with some kind of control module. And now for them to remember every single thing we want them to remember so that they don't get hurt, that's very, very difficult. And it's just reminding yourself that, okay, I always, uh, if I'm going underneath that combine head, the hydraulics are locked out. And Here's another example. Uh, probably uh, a month ago, long story short, fella driving down the road with a wing cultivator with a set of duels. He takes a hard left. When he takes a hard left into the side road, the cultivator, the right hand wing swings out. He rolls the cultivator. And I've never seen a tractor get so close to rolling over. And this was a set of duels. Like the duels were four feet in the air. I couldn't believe he didn't roll the tractor. He rolled the cultivator, but again, if he had put the transport uh, lock in place, that wouldn't have swung out. And he should have been going a little slower when he made the, the turn. But that's what I mean. It's when the push is on, those little things that you think, no, I'll, I'll, that'll be fine. I'm just going down the road a little ways. And that's when mm. the operator gets into trouble. I want to mention that health and safety doesn't have to be complicated at all. Fred's had some great advice here for us all to consider. And, and honestly, there's information that is free and easy to use. Health and safety tools and resources are available through workplace safety and prevention services. In your browser, whether you're using Chrome or Safari, just simply type WSPS 
Agriculture Health and Safety Center. We've been talking here today on the Farm Safety Roundup with Fred Young of Workplace Safety and Prevention Services. Hey, Fred, thanks so much for joining us. Great information, great conversation. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much for the opportunity to uh, support agriculture. With agricultural expertise to help keep farmers, their families, and their workers safe, Farm Safety Roundup is a podcast series produced by Real Agriculture with the team of ag specialists at Workplace Safety and Prevention Services. Go to the website wsps.ca slash farm safety. There you're going to find free health and safety resources, and you'll also be able to check this episode's show notes for information on the topics discussed. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time to talk all things farm safety right here on the Farm Safety Roundup.